What's up to all my freelancers and creatives, this is Nathan. And in this video, I have a question for you. Are you a professional or are you a pin? I'll get into what I mean. There's something that I've learned over time being a creative professional, and that is whether you're carrying yourself as a professional or just as a hired worker that someone's going to tell you what to do. I've seen this called many things, whether it be professional versus amateur, whether it be a professional versus a technician, however you want to phrase it, the principle is the same. You want to be known as someone who is a professional. In other words, somebody comes to you and asks you to solve a problem. They don't tell you how to go about solving the problem. They just talk to you about this is their needs, these are their goals, they wanted to do this in their business, and they're describing to you the overall result that they're hoping to get. But if you hear the wrong information, you may approach the issue like an amateur or like a technician or like a worker, someone who starts getting into the details rather than the solution. Let's say a client comes to you and asks a question about uh, a logo and they say, we're looking to you to do a logo, uh, what do you think? And you immediately start talking to them about color. Okay, what colors are your brand? What fonts do you like? You start getting into the details. There's nothing wrong with asking clarifying questions to see what style a client may like, but if you get into the details initially, the client is going to stay there. Now they're talking about how the thing looks and what are the visual aesthetics. What are the colors? What are the fonts? They're talking about their preferences and what they like rather than the goal of what you're creating is going to focus on. And the issue with this creates is now you're talking about details. And now when you're talking about details, the client is telling you exactly what to do and giving you prescriptive advice or specific advice t telling you how to do something rather than describing the problem and letting you use your professional expertise to get to the result. So let's think about this Sharpie that I have in my hand, this marker that I have in my hand. Um, I, I see it, I feel it, um, I take out the top and it has ink, right? And I have a piece of paper here I can write on. The Sharpie has ink and as I write things down, it will bend to my will. It will change based upon what I write, but it will follow the flow and I'm the one controlling the Sharpie, controlling the marker. So let me write something. Okay, so I wrote this here. I wrote, this is a marker. That's what I wrote on the piece of paper. Now here's the issue. When I was writing, my fingers and my hand cannot produce ink. Um, I can't do anything with that. If I rub them against a piece of paper, nothing happens. Even though I have it visualized in my mind, nothing will happen. But if I take this marker, I can bend the marker to my will. I can make it do whatever I want it to do. Um, I can sketch things out. And however I move my hand, the marker will follow suit. And it will do exactly what I want it to do. What am I trying to say in this extreme example of what I'm talking about? I've been on both sides of the coin. I've been a professional, but I've also been an amateur. I've also been a technician. I've also been just a worker where someone was telling me exactly what to do and how to do it with my skills rather than them giving me the project and allowing me to do my best work. You have to really ask yourself as a creative, how are you positioning yourself? Are you positioning yourself to be a worker who is to be controlled or someone who works with a client and the client feels like you're an employee of theirs so they have to project manage you and tell you exactly what to do and how to do it. Or are you a professional? The client can simply tell you what their goals are and you have a process that you go through in order to produce specific results that meets that goal. They don't care how you go about doing it, right? As long as it's not illegal, they don't care how you go about doing it as long as you get to the results and you have the freedom to do whatever you'd like or however your creative skills would allow you to do. Too many times I've witnessed creatives not acting as professionals. They're acting like pins, right? And you have to take certain actions to make sure you're not giving off that vibe. 
Now, let me be clear. There are times where you're working with the client because they have invested money into you. Yes, there's times where they're asking for something, you advise them maybe to do something different, but they really want to do one thing. That's okay. But the times in which you're acting as a technician or an amateur or really just a busy worker, the client is maybe standing over your shoulder telling you exactly what to do and you feel like they're micromanaging you, right? Um, I did another video of Freelance Jumpstart TV called uh, Red Flags from Clients, right? The next type of client red flag to look out for is what I call the do it my way client. Now this person really knows what they want and perhaps they have a vision, but they don't have the skills to do it or they don't have the time to do it. So when it comes to you, they're literally telling you what to do step by step. Make this button blue, uh, turn this upside down, rewrite this sentence, uh, make this different. Hey, I know you added up things diff this way, but you know, if you're providing tax services, hey, why don't you do this and apply these tax credits? You know, they're always weighing in on whatever the freelancer is doing and trying to direct you. Uh, this is a red flag for me because if someone comes to you wanting your services, there's a reason for that. And there's a reason that they chose you and you want them to choose you because you're a professional and because they like the way you do things, not necessarily because you're literally going to be their pen and pencil and whatever they draw, you just follow along. This was a certain type of a red flag. The fact that the client probably knows how to do the work and really wants to do the work, but they don't have the time to do it. So they're just sitting here telling you exactly how to do it. Normally those situations don't breed for the best work. And also as a creative, it leaves you vulnerable because you're not on the hook for goals anymore. You're on the hook for preference. And since you're on the hook for preference, it's difficult to tell when the project is actually done because you're trying to work to satisfy someone's preferences rather than to meet a concrete or discrete goal that's been mapped out and agreed by both parties. So how can we pivot to be more of a professional? I would say the following. Think about what are you selling? Are you selling your time or are you selling your talent? Are you selling just your hours per in a day? Like, so you're working per hour and now they want to make sure you use your hours effectively or are you selling your process and result? Really think about that. What are you selling? Because if you're selling your time, people will approach you like you are a pin and they wanna make sure they get all that they're worth for the time they're paying you for, right? But if you're selling your process, it doesn't matter you know, how much time you take because you're focused more on the result. Another thing is think about how someone found you. Do they find you maybe from a job board online and now they're reaching out to you? Um, maybe they view you as replaceable. They view you as interchangeable. Okay, you're working with them now, but you could be easily doing something else and they can replace you with another creative they find on the same job board. Or maybe they came directly to your website or they spoke with one of their friends or business associates and they came to you from a referral. So that means they want you specifically. That's a different pre-frame or a different positioning when someone's coming to you for the way you uniquely do things rather than they just need somebody to do the work. That's something you also, as a professional, have to evaluate. What is the intention of the person who is coming to me? Are they really coming to me because they genuinely want to work with me and my unique process and I've actually explained that to them? or? They just have, you know, a busy staff and they just need an extra member of their team and they want to micromanage you to get the result done. Which one is it? Thank you for taking the time to check out this episode. I greatly appreciate it. Honestly, this is something that is very personal to me because I've been on both sides of the coin before. I've carried myself and positioned myself as an amateur or as someone who is just another worker who is trading hours. I've done that before. And to be honest, I wasn't happy with those projects. Um, sometimes, you know, they would go okay if the client just let me do what I wanted to do. But the times where the client was over my shoulder and telling me what to do and giving me advice and saying they don't want that color, they like this color, but I had a reason why I chose that color to begin with. But they're telling me all these preferences. 
I didn't really enjoy that because I just felt like I was being micromanaged. And those projects where they gave me their goals and let me be creative, and then I presented to them a couple of different options and they chose the option, I was more happy with those projects. I was more satisfied with those projects. They felt more like they were leaning on my knowledge and expertise and they were coming to me and that we were able to arrive at that together. But a lot of it was me putting all of my knowledge into use in practice rather than them standing over my shoulder telling me everything to do. And I, I can definitely say those projects in which I acted like a professional, I enjoyed those more. If you really think about it, it's as simple as this. And this is something I even have said verbally to clients. You're coming to me because you want me to produce a certain result. You're coming to me because you would like me to get results of someone you heard had similar results or you like my work or maybe you have a goal, you have a vision and you want to help me bring it to life. That's perfectly fine and there's nothing wrong with that. However, the thing that I'll say is you are hiring me to do a job. If you then take the role of project manager or business advisor or um, creative director and you're telling me exactly what to do, now you're no longer doing your job because you hired me to save time to bring to life your vision because maybe you don't know how to do it. And let's be honest, no matter if it's making a logo, creating a website, um, shooting a video, doing photography, whatever it might be, the internet is has so much information, anyone could search on the internet for a certain number of hours, learn a new skill and then do that skill, but they don't have the time. So since they don't have the time, they hire creative professionals and we do the work in a timely manner and get them a result. But if they take the time of being a creative director and telling me exactly what to do and a project manager and telling me exactly what to do and this and that and the other, they're no longer doing their job. They're doing their job and my a bit of my job and I'm just executing what they want. Now, what did they really hire me for? Some of the benefit of what they hired me for is lost. And really, they're spending time directing me to do something when honestly, they should be using that time to focus on building their business or whatever it is that they do in their primary job function. Sure, people love being a part of the creative process because it can be fun. There's something wrong with that. And I believe every creative should have you know, different elements where they're including their client along the way. But I can definitely say that if they're spending all their time there, then they're probably not running their business and there's some other things going on that you may need to get to the bottom of. You may need to find out why are they feeling like they need to micromanage? Is there any type of nervousness, anxiety? Have they invested a majority of the funds in their business and this will either win or fail? What is the real reason why they're micromanaging? You have to get to the bottom of that. And again, that's the sign of a professional rather than a technician or a worker. If you're a professional, you need to get to the bottom of that. And if you don't know how to get to the bottom of that, I actually have a guide called 10 Must Ask Questions for Clients, and I'll include that in the link below. You can check out that guide and, and it has you know some questions in there that if you ask them, you'll be able to uncover what is really important to them and you know be able to uncover what's the main result that they're going for and then you can focus on that while they focus on their business as i mentioned earlier thank you for taking the time to check out this video i greatly appreciate it if you have any questions about anything i said uh, if you liked anything that you heard in the video feel free to give this a thumbs up any comments whether you liked or you had a question about something or wanted to comment on something ask a question feel free to ask a question in the comments below and I'd be you know, more than happy to answer that. If you're listening to this on the podcast, same way. Reach out to me on Twitter at Nathan Lote. Uh, reach out to me on my website, NathanLote.com. However you want to get it to me, I will respond because that's one of my goals. And that's something that I really want to do. Engage my audience. And if you really ask a question, reach out to me. I will respond because I'm trying to learn and grow as a creative. And I want to help you in any way that I can. Well, until the next one, I will catch you later. See ya.